on my screen here it says to do up with local storage access as you can see i have a couple of tasks here i will go ahead and add one more and then press enter yeah so it gets added at the bottom this to do app has access to the local storage so every tax you see here has been saved i can reload the page several times and they will still be there i can even close the tab and when i open live server again see they are still there they will only disappear when i click the trash icon so in this video we will learn two things the first is how to build a very simple to do app and the second how to save objects with local storage in javascript I have already written the CSS to save some time. So follow along while I take you through the HTML and JavaScript of this project. My boilerplate code is ready. Title of my page is to do app. First thing I'll do is to link my CSS and JavaScript files. Now onto the body tag. H2 tag with content to do app with local storage access. Next is a div with class container. Within this div, I'll create a form element with ID form. I'll delete the action attribute because I don't need it now. Within the form, I'll create an input with ID input. It will have a placeholder, enter your task. Finally, it's a UO element with ID list. I'm done with HTML. Let's move on to JavaScript. First thing I'll do is to select all the HTML elements I'll be manipulating. The form element, the input element, and the UO element with ID list. So the form element has an ID form. The input element has an ID input and the UO element or unordered lists element with ID lists. Next, I need to add an event listener to my form elements like this form dot add event listener. The event I'm looking for is submit and then the callback function comes in. This statement means when the form is submitted, which is when the user hits the enter key, this function should execute. Currently, when I hit the enter key on the input, the page reloads. I need to prevent the page from loading anytime I submit. So I just say e dot prevent default. Now you can see when I hit the enter key, the page does not reload. Next, I'll create a function and name it to do. This means anytime I submit the form, this to do function will run. Now I'll come down here and define a function. Function to do and then curly braces. First, I'll create a new variable, new task, and assign it to input.value. Input.value just returns whatever has been typed in the input box. Next, I'll create another variable const liel, which stands for list element. For this variable, I'll create a new element document dot create element li. I need to create an li element because they will be appended as children of this UL element with id list. When I open the dev tools of the final work, you can see that the UL element has li elements as children next li element dot inner html equals back quotes and expand tag going back to my dev tools each li element has a span tag as a child and this child actually contains the task entered that means within this span tag here i will input a dollar sign Kelly braces and then new task. This tells us that whatever I type in the input field will be put within the span tag when I submit. Now onto the delete button or the trash icon. The trash icon will be imported from font awesome. That means I need to add the font awesome CDN link to my HTML file. 
I will copy this link here and paste it below my title right here. Now I will search trash in front of some. This is the icon I need, so I'll click to reveal its HTML code. As you can see, it comes with an I tag, so that means I'll need to create another element in my JavaScript file. Over here, I will define a new variable, trash btn, and then I'll create the element I. The I tag comes with two class names, which are fe solid and fe trash. So I will add those classes to my I tag like this trash btn dot class list dot add and then into brackets fa solid. I'll repeat this line and change solid to trash. Now that I have defined the trash icon, I need to append it as a child of the li element. I'll just say li element dot append child into bracket trash btn. Finally, I have to append the li element as a child of the ur element with id lists. After the task has been added to the list, the input field must go back to being empty. So I will just add input dot value equals an empty string. I will now type something in the input field, meditate, and then submit. You can see it gets added to the list. I'll add another task. And as you can see, my code is working as a short. At this point, I'll add functionality to the trash icon. I need the task to delete when it is clicked. Below it, I'll add trash btn dot add event listener. Bracket opens click. And then I'll add an arrow function. Since I need that particular list element to disappear when clicked, I'll add li element dot remove now let's see if my trash icon is working you can see the tags disappears the moment i click the trash icon so it's working fine basically i'm done with the to do app i now have to add the storage functionality to it if you are still with me at this point then it means you are trying to learn something new make sure to subscribe and hit the bell icon so you get to see more tutorial videos like this the storage functionality i'll create a new function with name update storage within the function i'll create a new variable all tasks equals document dot query selector all li span this selects all the span tags which are children of each li tag Next, I'll create another variable, tax array, and then assign it to an empty array. Here's what I want to do. I want to push each tax into this tax array. For that, I will write all task dot for each. Another function comes in with a single parameter task. Within the function, I will put tax array dot push, and then I'll create an object. The object will contain the value of the span tag or the task. So value assigned to task dot inner text. Now let's access the local storage. Local storage dot set item and then bracket opens. It takes two arguments. The first one is the key, which I can set it to any string. I'll just type tax array. And then the second one is json.stringify into bracket tax array. This line simply means I'm storing this array in my local storage. The stringify method here converts the array to a string. Before you can store an array in the local storage, it needs to be converted to a string. Now I'll call the update storage function over here in the to do function. To see what is being stored in your local storage, open DevTools, click on application. On the left side, you can see local storage. Below it is my live server address. I'll click it and then it reveals what is being stored. I'll enter something and then submit. And you can see that what I entered appears here. If I delete a task, the update storage function needs to run. 
so I will call it here too. I want you to take note. The tasks have been stored in the local storage, but see what happens when I reload the page. The task has disappeared, but you can see they are still stored in the local storage. I can fix that by calling the tax again anytime the page reloads. I'll just define a new variable here at the top. Tax array equals JSON dot pass into brackets local storage dot get item and then another bracket. So this is where the key comes in handy. I can just call the tasks by calling the key assigned to it. In this case, the key is tax array. The pass method converts the data back into an object array. After the data has been called, I need to run the to do function on each of them. Tax array dot for each task arrow function and then the to do function. When I created the to do function, I did not give it any parameter, but here it needs each stored task as a parameter, else it will not work. So within the bracket, I'll just type task. Over here, the function does not take any parameter, but here it does. It means I need to make the function run with or without a parameter. I can do that by adding an if statement to the function. I'll first add a parameter here, task. And then below the new task variable, I'll just say if task. And then new task equals task dot value. The if statement simply means that when the function has a parameter, just assign the new task to task dot value. Else new task equals input dot value. I will enter something and then submit. And you can see that what I entered appears here. I'll add another task. And as you can see, my code is working as a short. Now I can reload my page several times and the tasks will not disappear. If you found this video helpful, then make sure to smash the like button and do not forget to subscribe before leaving. Thank you for staying with me until the end and I'll see you in another video.